So this is a quick uh, video on how to use spreadsheets uh, for your data from the ticker tape lab in order to populate this table, in order to fill in this table and make it a little bit less work for you. Uh, so first you want to create a new spreadsheet, go into your Google Drive physics folder, create a spreadsheet, name it your first name, last name, your block, and then ticker tape lab. Let's see what that looks like. So here we have it. I copied the headings and then all I did was copy the column from my data here on position that all our calculations are based on and then I put it into my spreadsheet and paste it in here. Again, if you didn't have this all done, you could just click on one, two, and then highlight them and scroll down and it'll find the pattern to 17. Uh, these numbers, you don't want 1 to 17, we want those to be the time intervals. So we start with 0 and then we had 0.1 seconds. I just want to copy that so I'll highlight it and drag down all the way because each interval was 0.1 seconds. Now here's the data from your ticker tape. Um, you can go on your, your lab notebook, you can highlight the column all the way down, copy it, Command-C or Control-C on a PC, and then highlight this column, paste it in. You might have to highlight the whole column and move it up once. I notice it sometimes pastes it below. Now, the displacement, we're looking at how far it's gone uh, since the last interval. So this is the total distance it's gone. We want to see, so for here we're going to say it's equal to the total distance minus the previous distance, and hit enter. So 1.2 minus 0 is 1.2. Now, instead of doing that for every one or doing it by hand and calculating it, I can just click on that box, drag down, and it takes care of that for every single one. So 95 minus 86.6 is 8.4. Gives me a bunch of zeros on here. So again, I'm going to go up to Format, Number, or I could go to this Number menu and go to Two Decimals, and it cleans it all up for me. So now I have my displacement. My interval time, again, is just... a it's a repeat of what's over here, but so you can use it for this data. So 0, I'll put in 0 0.1, hold 0.1, copy it by dragging it down. Now my average velocity is going to be my displacement over time. So my average velocity would be 0 at the start. Then it's going to be the displacement here divided by the interval. So I can do equals this box, divide by 0.1. And you can see my average velocity was 12 centimeters per second. Now I'll highlight that, drag it down, and it gives me my average velocities all the way down. I'll just clean it up, round it to two decimals, and there it is. Change in velocity is going to be how much these numbers change over each interval, because for the acceleration we're interest in, interested in how much it changes. So here, my change is zero to start, obviously, because there's nothing to change. Here, my values are going to be the current average velocity minus the previous average velocity. And then again, I can highlight that box, scroll down, and I get my change in velocity. Now, we'll talk about as this goes on what numbers we'd expect to get here. Uh, this is one of the student's actual data. So there's all types of sources of error from how you set it up, if somebody's grabbing the ticker tape, to if you miss dots, if the, tick, the ticker malfunctioned. So your data might not have the pattern that we would expect. That's not a big deal. We'll talk about what, we'd, what we would expect and why you might not have gotten it. So my change in velocity here is 12 minus 0 or 12. Here I have 15 minus 12, 3. Now, now my acceleration is going to be the change in velocity over the change in time. So this column G here has my change in velocities. Column E has my change in times. So I want this to equal, so obviously at first it's not accelerating. <clears throat> I want this to equal my change in velocity divided by my change in time. And that's my acceleration, 120 centimeters per second per second. That means the speed is changing by 120 centimeters per second every second. Bring it down and it populates all those. Clean up the number, and there you go. You have your data table filled. You can use this to go back and put into your data table in the lab. So this should be done for your data 
uh, for our next class.